this is actually where you, you know, you got the interlobar artery and vein. So what would that represent right there? Column. Column. A column. This is cortical tissue out here. This is pyramid. And the papilla is not pointed down here, but this would be a papilla down here that's coming out. And what you have is interlobar artery, interlobar vein, arcuate artery, and arcuate vein. What are these artery and vein here called? And so oh, that's the Cortical one. radiate is the one I like. You could, you could call it interlobular if you like, but... You but might you get it mixed up with this one and misspell it. So wait, what, the top part again? This would be interlobar vein and artery, okay. arcuate vein and artery, cortical radiate artery and vein here that goes out into the cortex. Maybe that's why they call it radiate, because it radiates, radiates out. out, like okay. the rays right. of the sun goes out like that. What we have over here... Like a lotus flowers. These little flowers are... Glomerulus. Thing. Glomerulus, right. Mm -hmm. Now, what is it that surrounds them, the white and the blue? The, the Bowman's, Bowman's capsule? capsule, exactly. Now, coming off of the cortical radiate artery is a little arteriole and it's going at the glomerulus. Therefore, it's called an afferent arteriole. Afferent. Mm -hmm. That's A F F E R E N T. A -F -F -E -R -E -N -T. E -N -T. Now the one that emerges from the glomerulus is the efferent arteriole. Mm -hmm. But efferent notice, away, notice it doesn't just go away. It breaks up into huge numbers of peritubular capillaries, which means capillaries that are all around the tubes. And we'll see why they're there when we talk about the physiology, but it's part of the physiology. Peritubular capillaries, it's the same as over here. These are all peritubulars too. And um, How does that differ from the radiate? Um, well, they... they uh, They're in a direct line, right? They come radiate back into the radiate through the uh, venules here that bring the blood back. Oh, oh, oh. so these the are route, the radiate, the, and these are the capillaries. Right. The route of flow would be from the cortical radiate artery through the afferent arteriole glomerulus, afferent arteriole, paratubular capillaries, back into the cortical radiate vein, arcuate vein, interlobar vein, renal vein, vena cava, blah, blah, blah. There you go. So, and these, these are um, also, and I don't know if they have them labeled in the book, but these are renal corpuscles. I think they do have that label. I think so, too. Renal corpuscles. And you have your various tubules, too. I'm not sure there's much made of those, but they do, they do label the collecting ducts, which are these two things. What would this be? Yeah. Loop of what? Henley. Loop of Henley. Loop of Henley, right. And well, but you say these are corpuscles. These are corpuscles, too. They are, but they're opened up. And okay. this is a corpuscle, a and the entire corpuscle is the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus. Mm -hmm. But here you can see both. You can see glomerulus, mm -hmm. and the outer part is the Bowman's capsule. And that's the way it's labeled in the lab manual. So. And as a whole. Mm -hmm. Now, once collecting ducts join, this bigger duct is a, mm. what part of the pyramid is it in down here? What's the, the pointed pump. part of the pyramid? The papillary. Papilla. I keep wanting to say apex because I'm thinking point. It makes so me stutter to too. Pa -pa 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 Papilla. <laughs> <laughs> and down there. Papilla would be the bottom and the ducts down there, papillary ducts. And they're formed by collecting ducts which join to form them. And what, what fluid emerges from the papillary ducts? Urine. Urine, right. It's not quite urine yet here. Mm -hmm. It's still processing it. And certainly not when it comes out here. It's filtrate. So it's filtrate here. Filtrate what is when it it's filtered and there, then it's then? filtrate, 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 still filtrate. Okay. 
technically, but it's becoming urine. <coughs> but it's still having things happen to it. There's, there are still uh, materials, electrolytes and so on being exchanged with it. And one of the big things that happens in the collecting duct is the um, final, it's not the major part of it, but the final controlling reabsorption of water. By controlling, I mean, um, like if you go drink a lot of fluid, then you're going to produce more urine, right? Right. If you drink less fluid, your urine is going to be reduced and it changes color, doesn't it? It becomes darker. That's controlled by combination of the distal tubule and this collecting duct's reabsorption of water, how much is reabsorbed. And there's a hormone that controls that. There are two hormones involved, but the main one we talked about already. What hormone did we say conserves water in the body? Oh, um, yep. angiotensin. No. Antidiuretic. Well, it, it, it helps. Angiotensin too does because it <coughs> stimulates the secretion of ADH. Yeah, you look painful. It's Your all tied in. Like <laughs> it's all tied in. Renan is actually an.